Okay, in today's video, as you can see, I'm going to be going over the magnetic field for a coil of wire. Of course, a coil of wire that has a current running through it. And this is just some pictures I thought I'd show you to start off with. Um, there's a coil of wire. Here's a coil of wire right there. There's a copper coil wrapped around something. There's a copper coil. And then this is a diagram you might see in a textbook or online. Um, this shows a coil of wire. The, the current is running up through the wire. You can wrap your hand around, point your thumb in the coil, wrap your fingers around. And if you get up to the top here, you'll notice that you wrap your fingers around from your right hand using the right hand rule that the fingers will be pointing from right to left. And that means that the magnetic field um, running through that coil of wire points from right to left. All right, and this is the equation that we can use. We'll talk about the equation in just a moment, and it just says here, description, the magnetic field is concentrated into a nearly uniform field. Uh, so we often say it's a homogeneous field inside the magnetic, inside that coil of wire, and it's a uniform field that's running along the center of the solenoid. Sometimes a coil is referred to as a solenoid, and that outside there's a weak magnetic field that's kind of divergent, usually more and more concerned about the field inside that coil of wire. And then we can take a cross section and look at it like this. These are the coils on the wire, the turnings on that coil of wire. Here are the current. This is the current showing the current coming out of the page, the current going into the page. And that means that that magnetic field is running from left to right um, through that coil of wire. Now, what I want to do now is go to the lab really quick and show you how we can see the magnetic field from a coil of wire using the magnet, using uh, iron filings and uh, some compasses. So let's do that right now. Okay, now using the iron filings, I'm going to show you what the magnetic field looks like inside this coil. Here I have a coil of wire. It's uh, set in this piece of clear plastic. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my iron filings and I'm going to sprinkle them onto the clear plastic. And then I'm going to turn the current on. I got about 20 amps of current running through that coil. And if I tap that plastic nicely, you'll see that the magnetic, <clears throat> that those iron filings line up along the magnetic field lines inside that coil. And you can see that the magnetic field runs parallel to the length of that uh, coil. And that is how you can see those magnetic field lines inside a coil of wire. Okay, this time I'm going to show you basically the same thing, except now I'm going to do it with two compasses that I have inside the coil. You can see now the compass needles are basically running or pointing perpendicular to the length of the coil, this being the length of the coil, the compass needles are pointing perpendicular to the length of the coil. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the switch and turn my current on again, get the current running through the coil. And you can see as soon as I start shut that switch, that now the compass needles react to the magnetic field that is produced by that coil that has a current running through it and now they align themselves up parallel to the length of the coil because that is how the magnetic field is oriented. The magnetic field, we have a homogeneous magnetic field inside that coil and the magnetic field lines run parallel to the length of the coil. So you can see if I open that switch, they go back to the way they were perpendicular and then if I close the switch, they immediately go back, it takes them a little bit of time there to quit wiggling back and forth, and then they immediately go back to being parallel to the length of the field as they align themselves up to the magnetic field that is produced by that coil. Okay, uh, now we're back and we, I think you can see that pretty well, the, the, the magnetic field inside that coil of wire. Now, um, the magnetic field from a coil of wire, magnetic field is a vector quantity, so we have to know its magnitude and its direction. And the uh, direction we're going to do in a separate video, and, and now I'm going to show you how we calculate the magnitude of the magnetic field. Now, um, there's kind of three different equations, and not really three different equations, three forms of the same equation. This, I think, is the simplest one, the one you'll probably see first when you, in class, it says that B is equal to mu naught. Um, this is the Greek letter mu, mu naught, or mu zero, times N, times I divided by L. Well, what are all of these very interesting things? Well, you should remember that B is the magnetic field. The magnetic field is measured in Teslas. A mu naught, this is the permeability of free space or the permittivity of free space. Um, it's a constant. It's 4 times pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meter ampere. Sometimes you'll see different units. 
Um, but it always has this value 4 times pi times 10 to the minus 7. And then there's n. n is the number of turns, the number of windings, and there's no units really for that. And then there's the length of the coil uh, measured in meters. And then finally, I is the current that's running through the coil measured in amperes. Okay, now, I did say there's three different forms of this equation. Before I show you the other two, I just want to go over the relationship between these three factors and B, the magnetic field strength. So there are th really three things in this case that can, uh, using this equation, that can affect the magnetic field strength. One is N, one is L, the length, and the last one is the current. So the turns, the number of turns, the length, and the current. Now, uh, you'll notice that n is in the top half of this fraction. That means that the magnetic field strength and n are directly proportional to each other. And that's what this says. B is directly proportional to n. And that means that if we increase the number of windings, the number of turns, keeping the length and the current the same, of course, then we're going to increase the magnetic field strength. Okay? If we decrease the number of turns, then the magnetic field strength will also decrease because it's directly proportional to each other. Those two things are directly proportional to each other. Now, the length is in the bottom half of this fraction. Divide by a bigger number, you get a smaller value. So that means that the length and the magnetic field strength are inversely proportional to each other. If we increase the length, then we decrease the magnetic field strength. Okay? They're inversely proportional. Obviously, if we decrease the length, like we squeeze, we could either like stretch the coil or squeeze it back together. Decrease the length, then we're going to be increasing the magnetic field strength. Now, the current, the current's what produces the magnetic field, so it should be somewhat straightforward that those two things are directly proportional to each other. The magnetic field strength and the current increase the current, increase the magnetic field strength, decrease the current, decrease the magnetic field strength. Okay, so I think it's good to know those relationships and it can give you a little bit of feel for how the whole thing works and not just kind of plugging the numbers in all the time. Okay, all right, now the other form or the second form of the equation that you might see looks like this. And it's basically the same equation except we put in here mu r. What is mu r? Mu r is the relative permeability. So what we do sometimes in order to increase the magnetic field strength is we can put something inside the coil of wire, typically like a piece of metal or something like that. And that piece of metal has a relative permeability, and you can see because of how that works with the equation, it just increases the, re the magnetic field strength. And I like to think of just kind of a simple definition for relative permeability. It's the factor by which the magnetic field strength of the coil is increased when we put something inside the coil. You can kind of have two kinds of coils. You can have an air-filled coil, which is where we use the first equation from the previous slide, and then we can have a something inside the coil, and then we put mu r in there because that increases the magnetic field strength. Now you can use mu r when you have a air-filled coil because the uh, relative permeability of air is one, but we usually leave it off when we have an air-filled coil. And if we have something else like uh, iron or nickel, they have relative permeabilities that are greater than one. For iron, it's around 200, depending on what kind of iron you have. And for nickel, it's 600, depending on whether it's a mixture of nickel or some, what's going on with the nickel. And if you stick a piece of iron inside the core, inside the coil, then you increase the magnetic field strength by a factor of 200. That's what that equation shows you when we add mu r in there, okay? And the third way you can see that equation written is like this. It looks basically the same. This is b, the same b, the mu naught, same mu naught. This is i for current. This is n. This is lowercase n. This is an uppercase n. This is lowercase n. Lowercase n has a definition. The turn density, which is basically the number of turns per meter. How do you calculate that? Well, you take the number of turns and divide it by the meters. You take the number of turns l, which is, excuse me, the number of turns capital N, and divide it by l, which is the length in meters. So you can see if I take this term out and replace it with these two terms, substitute those in there, that fraction, then you get the same equation we had in the first example. Now you can use this equation like this, or you can put mu r in there also if there's something in the core of the coil. So those three equations are all the same equation. You get the same answer. They're just different forms of the same equation for or for different circumstances. All right? Now, what we're going to do now is we are going to uh, do just do a simple example. And I, you put down here the most kind of complete form of that equation. So let's just say we have a current of I running through the coil current. I, 6 amperes running through the coil. We have 320 turns. 
we have a length of the coil is L. This is supposed to be an L. This was one, this was an L, but it looks like a one, so I changed that. I forgot to change this one. So this is L is the length is 40 centimeters, and there's mu naught. We have an air-filled co uh, coil, and we want to know what the magnetic field strength is inside that coil. Well, air-filled, I have mu R here. Remember, mu R for air is one, so we could just leave it off. So we calculate it, we just plug the values in now, four times pi times 10 to the minus 7 TMA, Tesla meter amperes. I'm not going to put 1 in there for mu r, although you could, of course. Then you have 320 for the windings. There's really no um, units for the windings. Then we have a 6 amp um, current, and you divide that by the length of 0 0.4 meters um, because you have to convert the centimeters into meters. You can see the meters cancel, the amperes cancel, and you're left with Teslas, and you get that that's 6 times 10 to the minus 3 Teslas. That's the magnetic field strength under those conditions with that um, coil. And that's uh, obviously equal to 3 milliteslas. Now, we could also put something in there, like a piece of iron, put an iron core in there, and we have the same equation, but now we're just going to multiply the previous example that we got this value in Teslas. Uh, we're just going to put an R, put mu R in there, and remember for iron, mu R is 200, so we just simply take the previous example, 6 times 10 to the minus 3 Teslas, and we multiply that by 200, and we get that the new magnetic field strength is 1.2 Teslas. All right, we just increase the magnetic field strength by a factor of 200, giving us 1.2 Teslas. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found that video helpful. We kind of little did a little introduction, showed you those pictures. We went to the lab, saw the magnetic field using the iron filings and the compasses, and then we went over how to calculate the magnetic field strength using those equations and the relationships between all those things. So hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Uh, let's see, you should uh, give me a thumbs up for this video, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below, and don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends, show them how much you care. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.